Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. This time we're going to go over Collider's part 2, which is going to be Collider-based events. Let me show you what we're going to be building, and we'll talk about it as we build it. So here we have a box with a piece of text on the front of it, which currently just says four dashes. I'm going to enter the box. You'll hear a noise, and then when I back out of the box, you'll see that the box is updated to have my name on it. This is the example, uh, an example, sorry, of a Collider-based event. Let's go ahead and build it. So I'm going to move to the left here, and I'm going to equip my developer tooltip here. I'm going to open up the hand menu and go to create new 3D model box, which will create a box like normal. If you're interested in creating a box manually, I have a video linked in the video description, which is called uh, creating a box from scratch, and it talks about all the components we're about to see, but we're just going to be colliding, um, concentrating on the collider components today. I'm going to go ahead and select the box by aiming at it with my developer toolpip and hitting secondary, and then hitting open inspector. Down at the bottom, you'll see the box collider. We talked about this in Collider's part one a little bit, um, but we kind of skimmed over one of the properties in the middle here, which is type. There are four types of colliders, and only certain amount uh, colliders can be used with certain other colliders to create collider-based events. I will go over this in part three, where we talk about uh, more advanced theoretical concepts about colliders, but for this example, just follow along at home, and we're going to be uh, setting this collider type to trigger, which is write once from static. Once it's set to trigger, go ahead and swap to a developer tooltip, uh, sorry, a logic tooltip, and grab the word box collider from the inspector, and secondary to spawn the box collider interface card. From there, open up the node browser and go into the physics node uh, folder. Once they're inside the physics folder, you'll see a lot of nodes. Don't worry about them too much because we're only going to be using on collision end, start, and stay. We're going to spawn out each of these so I can show you each one does, but we're primarily dealing with on collision start in this video. Let's spawn each to start with. I'm going to spawn them in a very particular order and I'll explain why in just a moment. So start, stay, and end. Now, collision start, stay, and end have uh, the same input, which is actually just any type of collider. Box collider is a type of collider, so we can go ahead and plug that in. So go to the top of the box collider uh, interface, hold primary, and drag that uh, beige tip into the gray. When you do this for the first time, you'll see that an arrow forms. This means it's worked. You can grab the tip of the arrow, actually the, the big fat end of the arrow here, and put it into the other ones as well. That's hooked up, and now we can talk about the outputs. So these are all the same, uh, but they output at different uh, types of events. So uh, what they do is they output an impulse at the top here. So we're going to spawn out a display node for each one. So we're going to go ahead and pull out a ribbon here and hit secondary for start, stay, and end. And for the second property here, you'll see that they output a uh, other, which is a collider type. As with many nodes, including these ones, where there is an impulse coming out of it, the data coming out of any non-impulse node is only valid for the length of that impulse, which is about one update cycle or one frame, whichever phrasing floats your boat. Um, it basically means that you need to use it or lose it. I say this a lot of times because a common thing that users do is they will pull out a display node for the type that they're looking at and wonder why nothing is there. And that's because the data is only persisted for one update cycle. You need to use it or lose it. With these uh, impulse nodes out, what we're going to do is stack them so that they are visible once we've entered our box over here and I can talk about what they're doing. So we've got on the top is start and the middle is stay and on the end is uh, end. So when I enter the box here, You'll see that we got one impulse on uh, the start. We're continuing to get impulses on the stay, and we haven't got anything on the end. When I leave the collider, you'll see that we got one on the end. So this is the first example of something where I don't advise using them, which is the on collision stay node. Uh, you can use that one if you absolutely do need to, but uh, do keep in mind that it will pulse once every single frame, letting you know that someone is inside your collider. I haven't personally come across a use case for these, but uh, do be wary of that and try not to use them whenever you can. So here you'll see we've got one start, which is when we started colliding, as in we entered. And we got uh, 914 when we were in it, and then one when we exited. So in, stay, and out. Now that we've got these hooked up, we're going to just use on collision start, which is when we enter, so we can delete the other two. The steps I'm showing will work the same with the other ones, but we're going to use start as it's the most logical one for this scenario. Let's make this make a sound like the example over there. For that, we're going to go to the audio folder of our node menu. Once inside the audio folder here, we're going to use play one shot. Once inside play one shot, we're going to spawn it into the world and we're going to hook up the top of the on collision start to the top of the play one shot. And we can delete this. Play one shot also needs an audio clip input. 
which we can plug into the second output, and then we just need a sound. To do that, I'm going to go to the uh, inventory folder within your inventory called Neos Essentials, and then once inside Neos Essentials, go to Sound Effects and then UI. Inside UI are a short of sh uh, a folder of short UI sound effects, which can be used for ideally UI, but they're also great for tutorials because I know that the licensing on them is okay. So we're going to go ahead and spawn out any one of them. I've chosen FX Action. You'll see it's this sound here. With this audio player spawned, I'm going to grab it with my laser and I'm going to poke it through audio clip and let go and you'll see it changes to audio clip FX action. Now when I enter the box, you'll hear that the noise comes from the play one shot node. If you'd like to know more about play one shot, I do have a video on it uh, for various other cases. I'll put some links in the video description. The last thing that we need to do for this video is write that uh, username to a piece of text. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to swap back to our developer tooltip, turn to some free space and go to create new text basic, which will make us a piece of text. We're now going to head, go ahead and inspect our piece of text. I'm actually going to put it just to the side of the box so we can see it once we've entered. I'm going to inspect it. We're going to find that text renderer component and we're going to go ahead and grab that and secondary to spawn it in the world and we'll get its interface card here. And then we need to write a piece of text to that uh, text renderer. So that for that, we're going to need actions write. We'll spawn that in the world and we'll connect the outputting uh, impulse from we'll play one shot into the top. And the uh, pink output can go straight into the text, which then turns the write impulse, to, uh, the write node to be a red or string uh, uh, text impulse. So now we need to figure out which user collided with the box. To do that, we're going to do some logics, uh, uh, acrobatics, as I'm going to call it, where we're going to need uh, quite a few nodes, but I'm going to go through each one in turn. So we're going to go to slots, and we're going to spawn get slot. Nodes are alphabetical within their folders, so if you have trouble, try and think alphabetically. We're going to spawn this in here. You'll see that get slot has a gray input. This is basically any component. What get slot does is it turns any component into the slot which the component is added to. So in this case, the collider component is added to the uh, slot which it is colliding with. So we're going to go ahead and uh, drag that into the input for get slot. And now we've got the slot which we're colliding with. From the slot, we want to get the user that uh, is, is owning that uh, slot. To do that, we can use a node called get active user. Get active user returns the uh, user object which the slot is parent to. So any part of my avatar, its active user value will be me. So I can plug that in. And now we've got the user or me when I collide with it. Now I just need the user and username. So we can go back and go to users and spawn in user username. User username. There it is at the bottom there. Then we can plug in the active user here and then into the right node here. With that, we're done. So I'm going to swap back to the developer tooltip for just a second and deselect all. And then I'm going to go and enter the box. And you'll see that when I enter the box, text turns into my username. That's it. We've recreated the box from the right. I hope you've learned something about collider-based events. They're great. Please use them wherever you see fit. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. In the next video, we're going to be talking more theoretical about where you should use colliders, where you shouldn't use colliders. I've saved the theoretical stuff for last because um, some people skip over it, and that's absolutely fine. But there is good information coming in the next video. So I'll see you there. Bye-bye.